In the previous video, we introduced the second price auction, which is quite simple because each bidder bids their true value. But it turns out the second price auction is quite common in real life. This video, we are going to study another popular auction format, which is a first price auction. So it's uh, quite straightforward. Each bidder submit their bids in a sealed envelope, and the highest bidder wins and pays his or her bid. So here we have some observation on reasonable bidding strategy. Truth for bidding is not optimal. So if you bid your true value, then your payoff is always zero. If you win, then you pay exactly your value, so your net payoff is zero. And if you lose, then your payoff is again zero. You also have no reason to overbid. In case of your win, you have to pay more than your value, and you will get negative payoff. The first price auction is a seeded auction, but there is an open format of the first price auction, which is a Dutch auction. So the Dutch auction is uh, strategically equivalent uh, to the first price auction. In Dutch auction, the auctioneer begins by calling a price from high enough. The price is going down until some bidder indicates her interest. So in uh, Dutch auction or tulip auction, so there is a clock and the, the clock is uh, uh, ticking down and the price changing and the bidder should uh, uh, press the bid button. And the first uh, bidder who press the bid button wins the item at that price. So this Dutch auction is used for like flowers and fresh food because Dutch auction can proceed trade very quickly. So what should be your speeding strategy? You should wait until the price is lower than your true value. Theoretically, to maximize your payoff, you should bid right before others bid. But you don't know others bid until the auction ends. So you have to some kind of a, uh, estimation on others bids. So that's quite complicated indeed. So we are going to consider two bidder case. And in this first price auction, again, your payoff depends on your true value and also your bid and your opponent bids. In case of your winning, you are going to pay your bid, B1. So this difference between your true value and your bid is your payoff. In case of your winning. If you lose, then again your payoff is zero. So we are going to have a, some reasonable assumptions on bidding strategy. The so first, a bidding strategy is a function of your true value. Okay? So you remember the strategy is a plan of action. So you are going to have a plan of a bid depends on your true value. Okay, so this beta is a your bidding function or bidding strategy that is a function of your true value. And for simplicity, we assume two players play the same bidding strategy. Of course, their true value might be different, but they are going to employ the same bidding strategy, beta. All right? And you are not going to overbid because it just hurts your payoff. So beta of x1 should be lower than x1. And the bidding function is monotone. That means if you have a higher value, then you should bid higher. Make sense? And no negative bidding. No negative bidding is obvious. You cannot bid negative number. So even if your value is 0, you should bid 0. So what we have to do is find the uh, equilibrium. So suppose this beta is the equilibrium bidding strategy. 
and both the player plays this the same equilibrium building strategy, and each bidder bids with knowing the other speed, right? Because it's prior information. You don't know your opponent bid before the auction ends. So, what we concern is each bidder's expected payoff without knowing opponent's true value or opponent's bids. So, your expected payoff it's just a function of your true value and your bid because you don't know your opponent uh, true value or your opponent bid, but you can take expected value over this your opponent bid. Your opponent bid, you don't know your opponent bid, but that is a random variable, and that depends on your opponent true value. But your opponent is going to play this. Equilibrium bidding strategy. So we are going to take this beta of uh, x2 and uh, we are going to have uh, uh, expectation over this x2. All right? So you are going to win if your bid is bigger than your opponent bid. With that probability, you are going to win and you are going to get that amount of uh, payoff. All right? So similarly, you can, we can have uh, your opponent expected a payoff, and in equilibrium, the bidding strategy is mutual best responses. So that means your bidding strategy, you follow this bidding strategy, that maximizes your expected payoff. And similarly, your opponent follows this, this bidding strategy, and that maximizes your opponent um, expected payoff. Okay, so now we are going to derive a condition for equilibrium. So given x1, given your true value x1, your expected payoff, we already derived this, right? And that is the probability of winning and your payoff in case of your winning. And since we assume that this beta is increasing function, so we can define its inverse function. So we take this inverse function, we take this into here, right? We have this. And then we can rewrite this probability in terms of this cumulative distribution function, right? And you are going to choose B1 to maximize this payoff. So what you have to do is uh, get the derivative and set that to be zero. And you are going to get the derivative with respect to your bid B1, because B1 is your choice variable. And here it looks complicated, but it's just a chain rule of this. And this is the derivative of uh, this one. Okay. D, db1. So please recall the derivative of uh, inverse function. Okay. And set that to be zero. Okay. So your bit b1 should satisfy this equation. And then now we are going to simplify this equation. That's the condition for equilibrium. As you are going to play the equilibrium bidding strategy, so B1 should be equal to beta of your true value X1. So replace B1 with beta of X1 and beta inverse of B1, X1. So make this as equation of uh, x instead of b1, all right? So just replace this uh, x1 and x1, and this is beta of x1, and this is x1, all right? And then we can just uh, simplify this 
by multiplying beta prime x1. So we have this uh, equation that is a condition for equilibrium. All right. So now we are going to derive equilibrium strategy from that condition. Okay. So please recall this is the derivative of this part using the chain rule. All right. And then integrate both sides. We are going to have this equation. And we have this uh, bidding strategy, equilibrium bidding strategy that satisfies this uh, equilibrium condition. That means the beta of x1 is uh, some integration divided by f of x1. Please recall that this one is equals to your expected value on your opponent true value conditional on your winning. All right, so now we have this uh, equilibrium bidding strategy. Your probability of winning is uh, f of x1. And your expected payment is probability of winning times your bid, actual bid. So product of f of x1 and uh, beta x1. Actually, this f of x1 cancel out. So one you have is this integral integration term. Okay, we just uh, change this variable to z. Now we can find your expected payoff. So your expected payoff is uh, you are you are going to be based on your based on the equilibrium strategy beta, giving you your true value x one, and that is the winning probability times your payoff and again this term first term x times f of x1 and the second term is going to be f of x1 times beta x1 that is uh, nothing but your expected payment right so expected payment subtract this all right, and again, you need to use the integration by parts, and the first term cancel out, and you will have this uh, uh, integration form. All right, finally, we are going to derive the seller's revenue. So again, as as we did in the second price auction, we start from each bidder's expected payment, and Seller's expected revenue from one particular bidder without knowing x1. So we have to take this uh, uh, expectation over true value of one particular bidder. And what's this m1? This m1 is here. All right, from here. And we use the interchange, the order of integration. Right, so this comes first, and this is going to be 1 minus fx, and that remains here. So again, the seller's expected revenue from 2 bidder is just twice of this uh, formula. So you can notice the seller's revenue is exactly the same with the seller's revenue in second price auction. Actually, this is not just a coincidence. So we have a quite surprising result, which is called the revenue equivalence theorem. Under some conditions, the expected revenue is the same in any standard auction. So this is a quiz based on the same situation, two bidder with the uniform distribution. Please try to find the, the equilibrium bidding strategy and seller's expected revenue. And also, Please compare the revenue of the first price auction and the revenue of the uh, fixed price system from the video one. So please check whether the seller can improve her revenue by selling through an auction instead of uh, posting a 
fix the price.